I hate the word luxury, sorry to say. No, 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 lean in. Because I hate the word luxury because toilet roll is luxury. <laughs> See, for me, yeah, this luxury. is luxury. All, this, all of these, these, each of these watches is luxury. luxury and gold. I'm just going to throw this on the table. Yeah, yeah, we've got the Nautilus. No, 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 my, my mind's coming this way. Right, George, you can't have any bias here. Ah, uh, true. I see this. Yeah. GMT as a luxury product. We've got from Seiko to Patek. So what do we think goes next after Patek, out of this lot here? Welcome back to About Effing Time, the number one watch podcast. With a... Am I Scottish or English? What are you? What are you? You are what do you grade... class yourself as? <laughs> well, I think Scotland's cooler than England, so I do class myself as Fuck Scottish. off. <laughs> so, with, 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 with I, a, a homage... <laughs> a yeah, homage, but, homage English. yeah but, but you say Scottish, but, okay, the, okay, but Scottish okay. watches. I'm like, come on, you know. I, 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 I am actually Scottish. One of my middle names is, is MacDonald. So that's, that's... McDonald and McCutcheon. Boom. Mc... Scott, Scotland has that. McBam. <laughs> McBam. <laughs> McBam. Are, you, are you English? I think you are the most English thing that's ever happened, aren't you? In general. I probably am English. <laughs> <laughs> I never know. Um, but I can't believe that we say that we're number one. <laughs> Just... oh, well, I'm sure we are the number one podcast with an Aussie, a Scot, and yes. an Englishman. We're safe in that territory. We're yeah. safe in that territory. In Mayfair, in the... shot at the hive. Yeah, today. Today at <laughs> 11.45. Come at us. How's that for a brag? Come at us. Right, what have we got on the wrist? Andrew. Uh, well, thanks for starting with me. You haven't got um, anything on the wrist. No, I don't, because I wanted to do nice. something. I wanted to do something showing off. live. Um, I've never worn a Studio Underdog. I've never actually had one on my wrist. Sorry, but you... The, the the thing is, you have to own these watches. So yeah, it's yeah, these you are watches. So you can't be given something by... I think I think you're gonna forgive me when you're you Are you selling out? I think you're gonna give you're gonna forgive me when you say this. George, Adrian, Andrew, Marcus, keep up the awesome work. I'm looking forward to season two. Cheers, Richard. I figured this is a good opportunity. So my watch today, what is on my wrist today, is a watch you can't buy, and that I don't own unless I just uh, Pietro, um, our uh, assistant on this shoot, suggested that we just gets lost in the mail. But my wristwatch today <laughs> is is this Halloween. Oh, do you yes. see? It's but the how pumpkin. did you get it? Because that's, you can't buy it. No, you can't. Let's show, show so this off. I just wanted to wear this today because he sent this to us as, a, as, as something we could put on the show. And I thought this is going to be my first ever studio under a wear experience. Um, the story behind this is just the cutest, George. It, it was drawn, who was it drawn by? Should we look on Instagram again? So someone drew a, a pumpkin themed watch and he was so impressed by the drawing that he had it made, gave one to the artist, yeah. and then auctioned one for six thousand. Oh, no and way. it was for a kid. Six hundred. Kid did quid. the artist. The kid was an artist. Yes. And I, honestly, it is. He it just sums deser him up. He deserves all the love that 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 every brand, every journalist is giving Studio Underdog. Give it they back. I'm wearing it today. So what's on my wrist? Thanks for asking. It's a Studio Underdog pumpkin that is one of two in the world. Okay. Just, um, you, you, you are kind of um, breaking the rules because you said no. you said to me, Let me get we have one. to own the actual watch. So I, that means I can bring the fucking game next time. I'm like, yeah. uh, I'm going to be, Guys, I'm going to I, I think everyone. Yeah, George, I think you have bought the game. Okay. Well, well, I own this. Well, well, okay. okay. <laughs> so I am, this Jeez. is, this is a Wes Lang. Tag Heuer Gold. Let's get it off. This is the prototype. It's a okay. big chunk of gold. Um, this is, so, um, quite a few of my watches become prototypes. Um, uh, this is the prototype. Um, gold gold dial. Um, and is it a copper dial? What is the actual it's a coppery, dial? It's, a, it's coppery rose gold. Yeah. Okay. Um, and this is designed with the artist Wes Lang. We've worked with Wes Lang before. How good is that? Now, logo? this is the thing. So this is off off a of Jack Hoyer. So if everyone knows, this was the rotor off a of Jack Hoyer because I had my Jack Hoyer um, uh, uh, tag Hoyer. And anyway, this this launched. Um, probably about the same time as this episode launches. So you can see the damage on the case. You can see that I beat the shit out of my watches. You wear your watches. Um, and, you know, I, I've been loving wearing this. Um, I love how... I love how we've deleted the date wheel and also the second yes. sub 
Uh, so there's three subs. We've deleted that and we put one of his pieces so of art there. So is the sub still under the dial? Uh, just... It's all been knocked off. So we've, we've actually taken the Carrera movement and and, and modified Modify it here. It. Yeah, wow. uh, you can also see, so I can point out some things. The strap is not 100% because it wiggles. And so it's not, so this is a prototype, but mm -hmm. it's my watch. You can yeah. tell it's my watch. Uh, it goes off for a photo shoot soon. Um, I'll show the logo closely because the logo is my favorite thing about this. Look how, look how badass this logo is. It's almost like the About Effing Time logo. Oh, yeah. See? Yeah. That is cool. Killer, man. Killer. 100% killer. <laughs> killer. What about you, Adrian? <laughs> Which oh, Explorer yeah. are you wearing today? <laughs> <laughs> this, this is my budget Explorer. This is a CWC G. Oh, I, do you know, I love military watches. And th th this, this is one of those watches that it it just proves a point that watch collecting doesn't have to be expensive. I, I bought this off eBay for about 60 quid. The whole thing was bashed up. The crystal yeah, or the glass that the, the head was, was all scratched up. It just needed yeah. so, so a bit of poly nice. watch. Actually, to be fair, it needed a lot of poly watch. But it, it's just one of those cool... This is a legit military watch. This isn't a reissue. This isn't... You can, oh, it's got the markings. It's actually got the markings. So that means that... Uh, so this is a W10... So, so it's got a zap number in there. And this was uh, issued on in 2006. So this is all legit military markings. That's so it's been loved by someone else before. And it has the Ministry of Defence you... uh, mark as well, which yeah. you can only put on if it's... Uh... Yeah, so zap. Uh, yeah. So the old zap. So I was really excited when I got with it, one of these and I, I sent a photograph to my dad and he said, uh, <coughs> did you did you pay money for that? Mm. I was like, yeah, yeah, of course. Because they all get... My dad was in the military and so they all get issued them and you just throw them in the top drawer and you don't wear it because... <laughs> Did you pay money? How else would you have got it? Well, he just thought it was ridiculous and would pay money for a watch you get for free. <laughs> and no one likes them, but I, I think they're cool. I love them. It's a little quartz ETA movement. Yep. Um, right, it's about effort. And, and on the basis of this, <laughs> of, of not needing to spend a huge amount of money on, uh, on watches, and it's about effing time we talk about what is luxury. So we've got Ooh. a micro brand, we've got... Uh, a heritage brand, but dirt cheap. And then we've got solid gold. But that in itself doesn't, in my eyes, necessarily mean any of this is luxury. Mm -hmm. But also, but all of this. See, for me, this is, is luxury. luxury. All, this, all of these, this each of these watches represent is luxury. luxury in some way. You know, because the thing is, it's your own flex. It's why I did G Shock. You know, for me, that was luxury. It was a, an idea of, you know, there's something cool about G-Shocks and I wanted to kind of do something. So for me, and I know I shouldn't be talking only about me, but it's what I, I loved is a G-Shock is luxury. You know, if you if you have the same premise as, you know, you feel a good way, you know, you think about trainers, you think about anything you wear, they can be luxury, they can make you feel luxury. I hate the word luxury, sorry to say. Because, no, 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 lean in. Because I hate the word luxury because... Toilet roll is luxury. <laughs> this is this is advertised as luxury bog roll. I'm like, you wipe your ass with it, and it's called luxury. I mean, to be fair, based on the stuff I'm using in my hotel, this is pretty luxurious. <laughs> yeah, but, but how many pliers that, that? That shit but, hurts. but for me, for me, <laughs> you're on a single ply, aren't you? <laughs> but for me, I'm like, it, it's that's called luxury, well, and so so that, for me is that. That I don't, I don't understand this whole thing about luxury, luxury, the word luxury, because I think that luxury's almost died and it's almost come back to we, we, we choose our own luxury. We choose our own benefits, our own things. And friends of mine, you know, think I'm mad when I go, oh, I'm staying in this hotel because I like the little treats on being on travel where other people are like, go cheap on the hotel because you only spend X amount of nights there. And I'm like, I want a fucking great sleep. I want to, my back hurts. The, I sound like an old, but, but I, want to, I want to have that experience. The, the, this, uh, this is exactly a conversation I have with my wife. My wife, is, she, my wife does not value any level of experience. It's all about matter of fact. Mm. If this hotel is X amount, this hotel is X amount, the underlying, the most important factor is, is money. Yeah. With me, the most important factor is I've got to get a good night's sleep. Yeah, yeah. That, and and that then has has a value. But to to your point, George, um, luxury is so personal. Personal, and and the reason I want to touch on this is I, I did a video. That I was actually quite concerned about doing because luxury is so personal. But I wanted to zoom out from the personal perspective and look at this from an industry perspective. So this is a dictionary definition of luxury. 
So luxury is a, a, a great state of comfort or elegance, especially when involving great expense. And an inessential, and for me, this is the most important part, an inessential desirable item which is expensive or difficult to obtain. And now, when we talk about luxury, we can say toilet roll on its own, regardless of the hierarchy of toilet roll, ply, comfort, the bounciness. We could say toilet roll on its own is a luxury. But if we apply these kind of feelings towards watches, I think there's a misconception around luxury, which what you alluded to is the word luxury. It's kind of like the word in-house. It's it all Swiss made. It's all got its own feeling. It's, it's so interesting you brought toilet roll because in my research, which talks about the most used, the, the, the words that luxury brands use to describe themselves, which is an entirely different angle I was going down. It mentions toilet paper in the first paragraph. It oh, says, right. luxury is also a relative concept. Quilted toilet tissue, which through my extensive experience, <laughs> applies to that <laughs> toilet tissue. This is quilted toilet tissue. Might to not seem particularly extravagant in the developed world, but it is indeed a luxury in countries where most people lack access to basic sanitation. So that relativism is impossible to get away from at the start of the conversation. However, there was a game-changing definition I found that I think is worth throwing in now. Because we're in a state now of, well, how do we even progress this conversation? Mm -hmm. Until this quote, the best luxury is the best of whatever something represents. So George, there is something, such a thing as luxury toilet roll, yeah. if it is the absolute best toilet roll experience possible. And I think when we get to talk about watches and talk about how do we possibly, because your definition's already thrown things into chaos. And that definition said, hard to obtain. Hello, is this the most luxurious watch in the building? Exactly. So again, we're thrown into a state of, and I want you to progress this conversation because your video is fantastic. But let me just say, the best of whatever something represents. So, so we can actually have some sort of a tangible way to talk about watches in terms of are they the best of what they represent in terms of their quality, their precision, their all of these different rankings. I think that adds a tangible element to this because we can keep spinning off into relativism. But, so, but th this is what I love about this concept is that definition destroys my view of luxury. Yes. Yeah, the rare attorney. Simon, you tell me that I don't need a winder, I need a wolf. It's written everywhere. It's a very catchy campaign. Yes. That's a big call. What do you mean by that? Well, we are the best. You have to think you're the best, don't you? Yeah. No, so we, we are we start the best. with that. We feel we're that. The best watch, we're the biggest watch podcast in the Mariana Trench. Wow, yeah. that's uh, fantastic. Yeah. I'll swim alongside you down there then, sir. <laughs> uh, anyway, the, the idea of building a watch winder that does what it should do was what I started with 25 years ago. So there were watch winders out there, but they weren't intelligent. That meant having a computer chip inside, tick that box. It counts turns per day, tick that box. Um, can start and stop where you want it to. Has a dynamic cuff, which we haven't looked at yet, which means any size band, metal, strap, whatever, will go on the dynamic cuff. That's more you than don't a need winder. a watch winder. Yeah. You need a wolf. We need a wolf in our lives. You need this winder. We have this winder available. Look, we've drove here in what I believe as an off-roader, mm -hmm. our sponsor, but it is the ultimate luxury off-road um, Range Rover. Now that's mm -hmm. uh, what I'm saying, four by four, it's modern luxury. You sat in those seats and you feel surrounded by luxury. Now, there is more expensive. Mm -hmm. There is the Rolls Royce, there is the this, there is the, you know, I can- The Bentley. The Bentley, I can list ultimately. Now they class them as luxury, but this is a four by four. It can go off-roading mm. and give you the wonderful luxury. I know when I've, friends of mine and also people that have brought this have gone, this is the best I've ever been in. Mm. Now they've had the roles, they've had the this, they've had, but Land Rover has delivered, Range Rover has delivered. And when we sit in it, that for me feels luxury. So 
Firstly, thank you very much for the sponsor. Um, but, uh, was, that, was that a paid spot? No, it wasn't because I, because I talk, I think about luxury in this way of like the perception, yeah. the perception for you. When I put a new pair of trainers on or I get a pair of trainers that no one's got, that for me is luxury. But, but then, and that's ticking both. That's but, hard to obtain and expensive. But sometimes not. The trainers I'm wearing today aren't hard to obtain. They're just, they work and I love them. But it is the thing of this... Uh, you know, I don't think luxury is queuing outside a luxury house. I, I think they don't give a shit about you. Brilliant. Yes. Uh, and that, for me, feels not luxury. I, but but this, this comes back to the hotel experience of a good night. It's, mm. For me, it's, it, it is the experience. One thing that, that, that I mentioned in, in the video and kind of um, that, that highlights the, how personal all of this is, is... I, I, at one point, I was broke, like dead broke. I had zero, literally zero money. And and, and my, my parents have always been in, in a, a relatively safe position, but I was hell-bent on never borrowing money from anyone. And this, this, this is an unhealthy psychological thing that I have. Even I, I could do with investment, but I have this blocker to say I don't... I have people offering investment in, in what I do. Uh, but I stop it because I, I have this thing of I have to do it on my own, which is, is terrible, it's toxic. Uh, it made me fucking broke. Um, but, but, but it got to the point where uh, buying a coffee from Starbucks, that was the ultimate luxury. So like, that, that would be a weekend thing. I'd, I'd, now it's, I have multiple a day, mm. and that sounds extravagant. But at the time, it was something I just couldn't afford to do. And so what I want to do is I, I want to separate from that very personal perspective of luxury, because we can absolutely say toilet paper is a luxury, a coffee from Starbucks is luxury, a 60 pound watch is luxury. There was a time where I knew 60 pound, I bought a 60 pound watch from Argos. And for me, that was, a, I felt like a baller. Yeah. I rocked that watch as if it was a, a gold roller. And for me, that's lux luxury because because it's your perception. Of it. And, and yes. I think we have to get, it, as you said, get over that side of it and, yeah. and understand where the watch world goes of saying, what is luxury? How do you feel? feel? I, I love AP. So AP have just, Odomar uh, Piguet have just changed their whole per perception of this, this high idea of looking after a customer. Mm -hmm. You turn up there and they've changed from retail on the shop floor type thing of here, buy this watch. And it's, it's a townhouse type thing. It's an apartment. It feels mm. luxury. You don't feel like you're being sold to. You, do, you walk in that door and it doesn't, you feel like... No matter what, even if they can't sell you a watch, mm. you feel like they give a shit about you. I've got a cool story about AP House that is just so sums up what you're saying. So recently, uh, AP announced that there'll be an AP House in Sydney, in Australia. Oh, yes. Good news. Bro. Big news. Just, just to say the first one was in the UK, so just, yeah. just screw <laughs> there, there aren't many. I no, heard. no. There's, there's less than five. It's I one of the right best. Now. So Sydney's a, this is a big, big draw, big get, and the head of that region, Stephanie, came down to, to tell us over champagne and high tea, which was a very nice thing, on a beautiful table. And someone asked the most astute question. They said, so AP houses are sympathetic to their different cities, as in they, they really try to reflect the architecture, the, the culture of the place. And uh, we were trying to get ideas on what the Sydney, what would be the Australian touches in Sydney. No clothes were given away. Thanks, Stephanie. <laughs> you kept tightly lipped. But someone else asked, well, what is their one common denominator with an AP house? And she said, yes, they are built around a table. Yeah. There is a table at the center of every AP Big house table. that is like a family dinner table. And that the concept of, um, God, I goosebump myself so easily these days. I'm, I'm really getting, maybe it's a lack of sleep. But I, <laughs> <laughs> thinking about this, but it's around service and it, it's around uh a sense of hospitality that is reflected on the fact that when you go to AP House, you sit at this, this central table. Or this, t this central table is a big part of how this whole thing comes together. And how, how different is that? And that sense of luxury for them is in personability, yeah. being a part of something uh, that, and being connected to a brand. Like to me that personifies, that's why AP, you know, the people that look on to this, this industry and just, decry and criticize the leading luxury brands and, and just and say and almost dismiss the fact that 
they forget that they're there for a reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. AP, these brands, you know, have had many challenges to stay at the top and they have to keep reinventing themselves in some way and they have to keep moving with what is luxury. This would have been a think tank yeah. that's continually, continually on mm -hmm. for these brands, mm -hmm. as in because week to week things change. And I thought that answer of there is a table at the, as a centrepiece of an AP house summed up why they're number one. And if they're not number one, they're in that top three cohort. It's because instead of saying, well, luxury is marble and, and walnut and uh, and lovely cabinets and, and it's chintzy stuff. No, it, it's a table and it's being served. It's serving your clients and customers. I thought that's that's why you're number one. So I, I, I totally agree with you. AP House, when you walk I haven't into, been yet. Okay, so when you walk into that space, it feels... But how they treat also their collectors. Yeah. They love their collectors. You know, I, I think I mentioned about Breitling last time, about yeah. a missing hand, and, you know, Breitling actually said, we'll send you the hand. Now, <laughs> I, I know that's... A, it wasn't missing hand, it was they fake hands. Hand. They really gave you a hand with that. They, they did. They said, you've got watchmakers and you can, you can change over the hands as a bullhead. But what I'm saying to you is, last night, there was a collector's dinner. It was, at 5.30. Um, and, you know, and I would got invited and I, I, I've, I've got a vintage AP. Yeah. That, it's not like, it, you know, I'm not the big buyer of APs. But yeah. there was, you know, I spoke to two people that were there and they said, yeah, no, it's not that you're their customer today. You may be their customer in 10 years' time, but yeah. you are part you've got an Odemar Piguet on your wrist mm. they care about you mm. now for me I'm wondering what other brands would do that the other thing is you walk into that space and when I'm talking about luxury there's a lot of places that you walk into that are perceived as luxury mm -hmm. um, and would you actually do your house like that? Would you be sitting, would you, would you go that disgusting wood, that this, that, you're, you're kind of going, what the hell? If I can't see myself in this environment yeah. with someone that's kind of suited and booted and, yeah. you know, and I don't connect with them, then what the how, hell are you doing? How am I going to wear tracksuit pants with this marble? No, or, or, <laughs> or that pretty woman scenario of like, you know, she walks in into that thing and they say, well, you can't afford this. Yeah. You know, AP is very inclusive same with i would say to you as you and i have been to the iwc store here mm -hmm. that you know chris granger what he did with iwc i remember the first first store he did was in singapore and i remember i was on a business trip in singapore and there was the, they said oh you've got to go and check out the iwc boutique i when it sat in there I redesigned my house. <laughs> I redesigned the wood I was using. I redesigned all of these things because I went, I want to be a part of that club. Mm. I want to be a part of that type of environment. Yep. And I think that then becomes luxury. It becomes the idea of you just want, you want to actually, and they care. The people at IWC. The hospitality factory. You know, yeah. you, you yeah. go into that store. I've gone in there. On my, what I mean is not not a not said before. Hey, I'm coming or any of those things. I haven't gone to anyone and said, Hey, I'm coming. And they were just like, Hey, do you want to try this? Do you want to? And try they didn't it? know who you were. They did not know. It wasn't recognised. Hey, George. You know, until the manager went, Oh, that's George. And you yeah. know, and I'm not that recognisable. So it was one of those things where <laughs> you're yeah. recognisable. No, but I'm not really. And you know, the salesperson there was very much like. Well, you're wearing, well, wearing a barefoot t-shirt. <laughs> no, no, but that's what I, I love. But, but what, what I'm hearing here is, is luxury is, is experience, its environment and its relationship. Now, for me, where this breaks is the, the branding and public perception of luxury. And so if we think about what is the most luxurious brand, one of the most luxurious brands is Rolex. What is the Rolex experience? What is the environment that Rolex is sold in? Yikes. And what is the relationship that you have with Rolex? Mm. I've, I've bought a, a, a few Rolexes. I think they, they, they probably said you're bloody lucky to have one. No, no, it, it, they, they know, do. And, 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 and oh, you're, you're, you're lucky to... It, uh, but, but, that, but, that, but the so, brand's so bigger than the customer. how did they get? It's, the it, okay, bigger let's than go the through this. Let's go through your list. Okay. The experience of buying a Rolex, I think we can agree. Yeah. It's not wonderful. No, it's not In pleasant. your experience? And when you're there and you're having that transaction, it's decent. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't say it's luxurious. Do you feel... But to get to that experience... Um, yeah. But is that their fault? Based on what 
I've, I've known about AP House. I haven't been to an AP House. But based on what you're explaining is we're going to do things. We don't have a product for you to, yeah. to buy. But we, we're going to maintain this relationship. Yeah. That's luxury. Mm. We're going to invite you. You don't have a modern AP. Yeah. We're still going to invite you to a dinner because we, we, we want to keep this relationship. That's luxury. You want to yeah. keep that's, the fanboy style. That's them giving a shit. At no point have I felt like Rolex gives a shit about me. And what's the second one? So that's environment. Environment. I guess that changes from place to place, but typically there's no difference from buying, um, let's say, a, a, a standard uh, Omega, a standard Tudor. Yeah. There's, there's no difference between. And it's still that interface. Tudor, with... Omega, Tag Heuer, Breitling. Yeah. And Rolex. It's still a brand, the interface across the counter. It's still the interface across the counter. Yeah. It's the, and it's process driven. It's kind of like you have to, each client will take us an hour, you know, and that's, and you can tell it's sit down. This is what you're doing. This is how you are. You know, I, I'm, 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 I want to forget about the purchasing side as quickly as possible. I want mm. to have the enjoyment side. I don't want to sit. The person is not my new friend. I, I'm having problems chatting to my friends at the moment. <laughs> so, you know, I'm really sorry to everyone um, that uh, it is my friend because it's one of those things you don't, you don't want that formality. You want to just get through, get the watch on your wrist. Unless it's something like AP House, where I sit and I'm, I, I'm like, I want to look at that book. I want to. It's yeah. why I built this office is because I wanted people to forget about the outside world, mm. come and design, come and hang out. It's the opposite of transactional. Yeah. So, so this is where. So I created a hierarchy of what luxury. Can I finish this last tick because so, uh, it's please, an please, obvious please. one. Relationship. Yeah, yeah. Relationship. Well, yeah. there, there isn't one. It's, it's transaction. So why but then the is brand Rolex is bigger biggest, than you. Why is the brand the biggest the biggest luxury brand in the world? So I but I change it. I say they aren't. Okay. So I have this hierarchy of luxury, <laughs> and I put Rolex at the bottom. So I have three tiers of hierarchy. <laughs> I have pure luxury. I have mainstream luxury, and then I have entry level luxury. For me, Rolex is entry level luxury for the only reason that they are so epically desired. Mm. And to be able to get one, you've either Let's, let's get one of these bad boys out. So, this is this is a Batman. I Give it a rub. Use your T-shirt. So. Rolex GMT Master Two Batman. So this watch, you're either I think retails for about seven thousand, a lot of money. In the watch world, not a massive amount of money, but this watch either retails for seven thousand pounds, or you get it on the grey market for potentially fifteen thousand pounds, which is a huge amount of money, and within the watch world is a sizable chunk of cash. But there's two things. Either you have £15,000, which you are in a luxury wealthy position to do so, or you're in the luxury wealthy position to buy this at retail. So regardless of how you've got this, you're in a good place. And this becomes an icon of luxury. Rightly or wrongly, society has created Rolex to be an icon of I'm doing all right in life and therefore yeah. it is an icon of luxury. As soon as you remove that, this, this is just my viewpoint, as soon as you remove that desirability, this product against the experience, the environment and the relationship is not luxury. Wow. And if you apply that to the AP thing, which we can say is quite clearly mainstream luxury, and then I've, I put people like Roger Smith right at the yeah. top, mm -hmm. where you go, similar to this experience, yeah. you go, you see Roger Smith, you sit down with Roger, and he'll talk you through what watches he has, what customizations you can do. The wait list is huge on Roger Smith's, but he builds a piece of horological art for you. That is what I think is ultimate luxury. Okay, so I, I'm going to put it in another world. There's, a car, there's car brands and the certain car brands, you cannot get for love or money that car. There's an overage, as, as we know, with watches. And these car brands say to you, you have to buy X, X, X before you're allowed Y. Yes. Now, the cost of X, 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 and you, you flip them onto the secondhand market, you are the uplift on the Y is actually cheaper than buying X, X and X. Right. And so for me, what I'm saying to you is, let's say the AD at whichever brand it is, you've got to buy some crap watches to get the attention of the AD that then goes, hey, yeah, you're allowed that. 
And that then you go to yourself and you think about the uptick. Mm -hmm. So you've said the uptick is 15 or whatever it is. Work out what the uptick is. Because for me, the other thing is something like that. You turn up and people go, oh, yeah, he's worth X amount. But they don't go, can I look at it? It, yes, and they yes. will go to that, they'll go to that, they'll go to this, they'll go to yeah. any watch. And you feel like actually, you know, when we were, we were discussing the other, uh, the other day, we, were, um, we had Lucian in, we were mm -hmm. discussing different watches. Now, you know, you, you could be at this level or this level, it doesn't matter, but you want to have something where people go, that's a conversation. Yeah. Yes. You yes. know, that for me is a conversation. It's like, um, I, I think there's another watch in there that's that's only a very small limited edition watch. Um, there's a green... Did you... Have you got it in there? The GP? Or is it in the back? Oh, no, it's downstairs. No, okay. It's downstairs. We, we can get it. Can, Perfect. But can get it. The Jero Perigo, uh, it's a green in a little watch uh, case. Can I divert the conversation a little bit? Just because I think... That's luxury. So this was purchased for £6,600, and this is at retail £7,000. So this one ticks the box of being expensive and hard to obtain. This one ticks the box of being hard to obtain, as in impossible to obtain. And the, So how do you feel about the desirability of both of those? Because what I want to suggest to both of you is that part of the appeal of micro-brands is that despite their price point, the scarcity of them actually makes them luxury objects. And while the perception of micro brands in the early part of new micro brands entering the watch world was, oh, this is just cheap budget stuff to, to <laughs> feed to the, to, the, to the minnow to grow into the salmon that can buy the AP many years later. However, I would like to suggest that this is potentially the most revolutionary thing about the, the rise of micro brands is that because they are hard to obtain in many cases, which we talked about in season one, and it's why we feature BYOI. It's an ongoing, more than fascination for us. It is an obsession for us. And I, I put these next to each other in terms of if the market's determining, determining the value, so these are actually equivalent. I, I, I... <clears throat> I disagree because hard to obtain can't be the only, isn't the only factor. But it's expensive too. It was six thousand six hundred pounds. But it, c correct. But so so there, there's there's uh, what's it uh, when you have circles and there has to be a little thing in the middle. Can't oh the, yes, I know what you mean. Yeah. So so there, there has to be so a Venn diagram. A Venn diagram. So so you've got. Um, there we go. Let's do it. So you've got accessibility. You've got build quality, and then you've got cost. You can't. If it's hard to obtain and costs a lot of money, I don't feel that's luxury. <laughs> if it costs a lot of money uh, and the build quality is high, the desirability means that it is easy to obtain. I don't think that's luxury. That because it's relatively easy to build something to a high level and charge a lot of money for it. Because it's just engineering. You can't have. This you is, have to this, have. You have to have the branding. I feel like I feel like some angels just started seeing somewhere. This is like a Da Vinci Code unlocking, <laughs> Adrian. We didn't talk about this Venn diagram. This nails it. But but also, it, <laughs> you then can't just have it here. So the, the luxury has to be. What, what would that be? That would be. So that that build would be quality and. Ex that would be build quality and accessibility. If something's just hard to obtain, but it's it's uh, it's it's high build quality but low cost, mm. you wouldn't feel like. That, that, that would be Ikea. Yes. Highly accessible. Yeah. Or, or it could be the Ikea thing that's sold out. Just because it's sold out doesn't mean it's luxury. And that's what I feel is, is about micro brands. Just because it's sold out and you can, afford, you can afford to buy it and it's good quality doesn't mean it's luxury. So however, luxury... However, I can add another layer over the top because the other thing that this gives you is that you will have contact with Richard when you buy this watch. There'll be something handwritten. So we go back to your other points here. So you will establish a relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, there will be um, an experience of, that you will tell people about. Oh, I met the founder. So again, I, I add these in to say, does this tip the scales? And is this why micro brands are so compelling? And I, I would say that comes into um, this section here of the accessibility is essentially a brand. Yeah. At how desirable is the brand itself and that experience builds the brand and so i feel like that is all part of the same thing 
when we come back to your definition of luxury, that it has to be the best. The best of whatever something represents. This is represents. not the best. No. Love Richard, love Studio Underdog, but yeah. this is not the best. No. We've, we've, is that Sapphire Crystal? Possibly a Sapphire Crystal. Um, the, the movement in the back is a seagull movement. Absolutely fine. There's, there's no qualms about that. The finishing isn't high quality finishing, uh, but it will run and it will perform how you need it to perform as a columnar chronograph. This is superlative chronometer. This is graded higher than the people who grade chronometers. And therefore... That's why they created their own <laughs> chronometry it. certification. It, it, and, and, but that's it. This is a highly water resistant, highly usable, highly desirable and highly accurate machine. Mm -hmm. And so therefore I feel like that is a luxury product. But you put them at the bottom. Yes, because they lack <laughs> everything else that I, that I, that I personally feel is luxury. So let's come back to the car thing. George has gone into another dimension. You I'm sorry, I, no, I feel like, I feel no, like I'm no, talking you, too much. Do you know, actually, I'm, I'm going to put this to our viewers. What do you think? You know what? What? Where, are, are we right what? on on this classing? Are we? Are we right? We'd love to know what you think because for me, this is something that I'm asking you. I'm I'm kind of, I mean, he's just blown my mind because <laughs> the thing is, I you know, this is where I was debating this thing about Richard Mill, and I realised that ultra light was ultra luxury. Yeah, or, or you could also vote on whether you think that this ticks enough boxes to be considered a luxury object, or whether by Adrian's definition of the best of whatever something represents, if it fails at that, does it fail at luxury? That's a good, that's another specific question. So, so, what, what, what so why I brought this is, this is, is this is Jared Perigo. This is um, something that ticks all those boxes to a this? degree. It's a limited edition. It's done as a duality of a brand. It's desirable because of both brands together. It's, it, it, it's everything, it's ultra um, on manufacturing, it's Gerard Perigo on every side. Does this go into that box? So. Well, Adrian's the uh, Adrian, be beautiful mind here. <laughs> go on, you, you take it out of there. Um, <laughs> slide it out. So forged carbon. Um, so yeah, talk, talk us through this. So it's a forged carbon. If you look at the dial, it's a, a double uh, double axis dial. It, I mean, like you think about that. That's an Aston Martin uh, reflected dial. The strap is unique. Um, this is all as a uh, you know. If you talk about limited edition, this is a limited edition you cannot get for love of money. I haven't seen one this on anyone's wrist apart from the Formula One drivers and Lance Stroll wears it. So you know when I look at it. This is two brands, two, two luxury brands coming mm -hmm. together. This is a partnership of F1. It's one of their existing watches, but they've really tuned it up to the next level. Now, when I look at this, this ticks your boxes. This ticks your, the whole thing. So this, what, what, what one premise that I, I, I spoke about in my video is that if a watch is genuinely a tool, then that inherently stops it from being luxury. So, for example, you think about a combine harvester that can cost a quarter of a million, oh, half a yeah, million pounds. Yeah, and up there. Uh, yeah. yeah, well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing. And I'm, its owner operators, so most people that are farmers buy it for themselves, and, and it's height of technology, height of everything. That but at no point would you class that there might be a luxurious version of um, a combine harvester. But, but for, for them, it's the technology in it. It's the whole thing. That for them, it's it's a tool. This is the interesting thing of the duality of of this. These things we can do without. Yes. A thing like a combine harvester, but that's a tool, or or a, or a digger. Mm. It's you, a functional object. You can't. No, it makes money for someone. Yes, it's a. It makes, but you, but it's a tool. Hy hypothetically, you can do without this. You can do without any watch. You, you can tell the time through your phone. Hmm. So you, when you, I, I look... You, you can, but these watches are marketed as dive watches. Now, one could say, okay, this 250-pound Seiko SKX does the same job as, as this Omega Seamaster to a degree, but this Omega Seamaster can withstand far higher magnetic fields than this one. This is far superior accuracy-wise, and the longevity of the movement will outweigh this massively. They technically both do the same job. This, you could argue, is a more luxurious version of that. But if we break it down to factual performance, no, this is just a higher performing version. I don't see the Omega Seamaster as a luxurious watch. 
if we take it for what it's marketed as, a dive see, watch. See, for me, I totally disagree because I was on holiday and someone had one of these watches on and every time they went into the sea or the pool, they took it off and put it to the side because they didn't want to go. <laughs> and the, for but me, the, but but that, we're coming he, back to the sees it, he sees it as luxury. He we're sees coming it back as... to the personal aspect yeah. of it. It's, 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 it's like when, when you buy a new combine harvester, I'm sure you wash it every time you... I don't know anything about combine harvesting. <laughs> I love <laughs> but... that we're going down this route of combine. Actually, this is another of George's sweet spots, right? Oh. <laughs> okay, let's, let's, let's get back to this watch. <laughs> so, so, so my reason of bringing combine harvesters and, and automotives into, into the fold is... If you think about the difference between uh, a BMW 3 Series, that isn't a luxurious product, it's a, a premium car. If you take the BMW M3, that's a sports version. You could see that on a racetrack and someone could be performing uh, highly with an M3. Now, if you take a Lamborghini, again, I'm getting out of my depth here. What's, what's a Lamborghini uh, Aventador? Is that a modern Lamborghini? Yeah, well, you can you can go through them. I mean, I mean, okay, let's let's just take the, the, the common Lamborghini. You are unlikely to see one on a racetrack. They are they can perform yeah. on a racetrack, but you're unlikely to see it on a racetrack. That's how I see this. A Lamborghini is a luxury product. This, for me, although technically a chronograph is built to be a sports product, there's nothing about this. I feel has been designed to be the sports product. This has elements nodding to the tool, but ultimately it's luxury. I'm going I'm, I'm to call bullshit on this because Go I'm, I'm going to say to you is, and I'm bringing Richard Mill back up, you know, Rafa Nadal wore a Rafa Nadal and that for me is luxury with the sports. This is, yes, he can't, he's not allowed to wear. So Lance are, is not allowed, they're not allowed to wear watches f on in the race car. Mm -hmm. You look at IWC, you look at all those brands. But IWC if, painted on the gloves, paint, which is but really cool. <laughs> if they could, mm -hmm. they would. These are built to the G's and then, but same with these, these don't go die. I, I, I would love to say, apart from you've got someone in the Time and Tide um, club yeah. that's an avid diver and he keeps on sending me the, the coolest films yes, of him going diving and things like that. With his Bamford t-shirt, right? Yeah, he's the one that you yeah. go, yeah, this guy is a cool diving guy. But most people, I'm wondering how many times you've gone scuba diving in that. Plenty. <laughs> Never. No, no, but my, 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 my counter argument to that is if you take, if you have a thousand divers and you ask them what's on the wrist, I wonder how many of them, what the percentage is compared to a thousand people with Rolexes on the wrist, with, with Omega Seamasters on the wrist. These are expensive products. If you're doing diving, it's an expensive hobby. You're not necessarily going to spend thousands on your dive. I do know divers who dive with, with sea dwellers on the wrist. And that is their main thing. They say they, they have a dive computer on this wrist. On this wrist, they have their sea dweller yeah. because it's far quicker to monitor your dive time because of the bezel rather than looking at a computer with X amount of, Every other um, of, of digits on there. You have to search for your dive time. No, nope, glance at this one, dive time done. I have recently found one of my first watches. The problem is that the bezel's a bit, um, a, a, a bit fun. The, the trick is that you can just use um, uh, things the house. It is a shame that the bezel's a bit dodgy on this thing, but it will give me a chance to, to tell you guys about uh, a bezel that isn't dodgy. Getbezel.com. Behind the, 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 the very fancy branding and the, the slick website and the very easy to use app, there's a whole team of watch experts who are not only passionate about watches, they are incredibly knowledgeable about watches. Bear with me. These guys have over $220 million worth of watches, which makes me think we could be doing something else with these tools. So whether you're buying your first nice watch and you want a little bit of handholding along the way, they will do that. The most important part is the fact that they will authenticate every single watch that they sell. It's crucial to have a, a, a rubber tip whacker because you don't want to add extra dents into your watch. You don't want to scratch it unnecessarily. Now the nice guys over at Get Bezel have given us a discount code that we can give to you. Just use AET200 when you check out and you'll get two hundred dollars off your first order which is um pretty handy go to getbizzle.com check your next watch so where does this sit you know where does luxury sit mm -hmm. you know maybe we we go to that and say well what is luxury to each of us what yeah. what is our our opinion of luxury on what we've learned i think we need to to not necessarily come to some kind of agreement but perhaps come to some kind of ranking 
Does that feel fair? Well, I do think that the, the only way there could be a ranking is if there's some sort of a tangible matrix or a tangible scale. And that's where we do come... I think it's worth coming back to this idea that the best of whatever something represents. So if a watch is representing watchmaking, then surely we can at least say, here is an industrialised um, product with no human fingerprints on it versus something that, uh, like the Roger Smith handmade, where every component is handmade. There, that is a spectrum. Do we agree on that at least? Yeah. Okay, great, let's do it. Cool. So I'm going to play some watches out. So we've got a... Let's, let's, let's sack off the Black Bay 58 because we've got this Black Bay um, in gold. I'm just going to throw this on the table. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're just going to put these down. <clears throat> um, let's, if we've got a Nautilus. I instinctively put that all the way to the, the left. No, 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 my, my mind's coming this way. You're coming that way. Right, George, you can't have any bias here. Yeah. As, as a Rolex fan two Rolex. Do we, do we need two? We do, because these represent two different parts of Rolex. Ah, uh, true. I see this. Yeah. GMT as a luxury product. I do not see the Explorer 2 as a luxury product. Interesting. So this is, without in doubt, positions. a tool watch. Everything about the design of this watch, I've done many videos talking about this, um, whereas this clearly is. We've got exposed gold hands, exposed gold hour markers. We've got polished center links. Things have been done to this to make it stand out as a flashy product, whereas this, although it has gold hour markers, gold hands, they're all black and there's no... So it's it's a dumbed down product. Uh, any other watches? Any uh, you never know what a, you can find in that. We've drawer. got an IWC coming. Um, Thank you. Because you talked about IWC earlier, so we've got. Uh, Actually, it might be interesting to put the Black Bay 58 in there because it means we have two pretty much technically identical watches. Mm. Um, so you've got IWC. I think one. So IWC. out of this collection, what do you think is? The pinnacle we've got from Seiko to Patek. What do you think is the pinnacle of luxury? Is which one? Of oh, side, right or left? Let's 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 say this is luxury up here, okay. and this is this is non-luxury. So you mentioned just then watchmaking. What do we think from here oh, is the pinnacle of watchmaking? Why don't you adjust? This is, one this you, is no, no, but why don't you adjust it? Why don't you adjust it, and then well, we I'm can just correct. saying oh, that's where I'm placing. Okay. But what I'd like to mention is that I, I'm eighty percent sure this is a JLC movement. <clears throat> yes. That doesn't change anything for me, no. Because it isn't, it, at the time, I mean, we, again, we've got to put this in an era. Mm -hmm. This this is, this was a brand that at this point in time was, was fighting a tide of luxury that was defined by gold watches and luxury that was defined by gold dress watches. So to me, the fact that this redefined luxury in a steel watch actually makes this the predecessor of all steel sports watches. So for those reasons, it, it, it absolutely redefined and represented luxury in its time. And I think it still does now because it is potentially even more desirable than it's ever been. And also you mentioned the JLC movement. I consider JLC movements and JLC to be a luxurious brand because for me, on that spectrum of industrialized movement versus um, highly technical watchmaking um, at its finest, I still put a JLC movement in that category. Okay, I've I've brought something that I think is, I'm. We brought the GP. I've just got this. This is this is what we talk about. Limited edition, mm -hmm. rare ability. It's a G-Shock, right? But you can't get it for love or money. It's with King Nerd. It's a really cool cool King Nerd. I love love him. Love what he does. But you can't get it. Now, does that fit into this? Where does it fit into this luxury thing? Where you know. It's a G-Shock, but it's a metal case. It's a, so anyway, it's a, you know, where does it rank in these type of things? I, I actually don't know. Because for me, that lacks the, the finesse that I see with IWC and that I see with Patek. However, it clearly taps into a different element of design. It, what it lacks in finesse, it absolutely has in art. Yeah. And so I don't, that, that stumps and, me. But this is where I think on luxury is it's in the eye of the beholder. Absolutely. It's in the eye of the butthole, it's, it, it, as, <laughs> as you've already spoken about earlier. But it's in the eye of the beholder. You know, this, for me, when I put that on, it's, it's bling. It's, it, 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 you know, I feel like it's luxury in its own way. So w what do we think goes next after Patek out of this lot here? I'm thinking IWC, but that's me. I don't know what you think. Or GP. 
I would put these on a par. I would put these in, in similar categories in terms of that. Sadly, well, it doesn't stand up right now. Yeah, so I, I, I can hold it. It's fine. It's, fine. Thank you. it's absolutely fine. Um, cool. Okay. What's after IWC? So we have a solid gold. Okay. So that's interesting that the, the steel Rolex trumps. Let's leave that there. Sweet. What's next? So we've got Tudor, two tone Tudor, Tudor, Tag Heuer, solid it's gold. It's going to be a concession of gold. Sure. But do you think? But also, that's unique in its own way. It takes so, the other box. So, so it takes another box, and people. and that's the thing. So for me, I and I'm, you said no bias, so I've got to shut the f up. But I think that sits there because yeah. I look at something like I, that. I, I found it hard to split these two because I see these as fitting in the same world. You know, this is this. These two I see as pair, and then I see that one comes on. And that is, you know, you think 25 pieces, that's it, done. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the whole experience. So for me, I, I, I go this one next, but that's me. I, 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 my, my instinct was that next. Mm -hmm. But then I go this. Wow. Okay, interesting. And But this is me going it because mm. I go the rarity of it. I don't, one, of, one of two in the but, world. But what if we come back to the idea of um, craftsmanship, this mm. seagull movement? Mm, that actually belongs here in terms of movement. Yeah. Movement. So that that that's that's where this is why. But then this trumps this clearly because yeah, of its... th and that that's that's got the that's a fuck you watch. That that's fuck you. I've got this. You know. But but to whom? Only to a select few. Yeah, but I... whereas society would see this as a fuck you watch because it's gold. Everyone. Mm. But so you know when you look at gold. Is that a fuck you watch versus this is where I I think that la, uh, where the, 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 there's so few people would know that that's limited. Yeah. Whereas this is telling the world that and, it's and, gold. Th and this is what I mean. Yeah. Uh, this is what I mean about this yeah. one. No one's going to know that this is limited. No one's going to know that this is a hard watch to get. So I, th I, I, I'd, I would have to bump that down. Okay. Yeah. And I believe this exists in this realm because the the accessibility is possible, which it is with both of these pieces. Mm -hmm. Um, but this ticks the other two two boxes of quality. So are we going to do a Rolex next? I think you have to. Or does this sit under here? I think it sits under. I think it sits mm. between there. <laughs> no, no, I don't. I, 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 because of your stipulation of what you said, I think it could. I, I think it's halfway between the two. I, so I, here I, or here? Here. Because I, I think it's, and then you put the other Tudor. I think there is an, a, the, I think it's, it's where I think these, this perception. How do these trump this in terms of their luxuriousness? See that, that I'd, I'd hap, I'm, I'm happy to see the difference here, but I struggle to see a difference here. I, I see this as a superior product to this, to the Seamaster. Mm. Purely well, that's based why I had to build between the two. So yeah. I, I would put it here, in, 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 in line perhaps. Mm. And then that, this is what I would do. And then like that. But I'm, I'm happy to be wrong. <laughs> and then this, this funny one at the end. <laughs> oh, and where does the G-Shot yeah. go? See, no, I no, no, no. I, I, I would have to bump that up. It can't go down here. So then it probably would it be equivalent there? with this. With the, those sure. two? Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. So does it go like that? You know, it's, it's special, but it's a niche special. Yeah. But... See, I, I just our thumbnail. But can I? Can, can I? Can we get? Can we get all our hands in? <laughs> oh fuck! I'll hold it. Let's, let's, let's just, okay, let's let's just get all get hands on with. I'll have I'll have to touch a Rolex. <laughs> and this cool. is highly subjective, and, and it, it really is. But but the other thing is, we're not analysing every brand because if you put all the brands out here, you've got AP, you've got you know, for me. I think something like, and I, I've mentioned it multiple times, but I think a, um, something like a Richard Mill or a HYT. Oh, there's more. They sit up here. You yes. think about oh, Moser. Absolutely. They sit yeah. this, with this, this AP. Isn't and, ultimate. This no, is, this and isn't... and and that's the thing. So or Roger Smith, and you know, so this well, is what just what we didn't have is that handcrafted high end yeah. independent, yes. which I think would be really but, fun to play but with. Can I throw something else there? You've got something like Garrick. Where do they sit in this? Yeah. Because on your plan, I'd say that they're, they're down hit this area, but they're, but they're, they're handcrafted and but they yeah. aren't desirable. But or Anandane again, 
you know, they handmade. So this is where mm. it's in the eye of the beholder. It's like beauty that's, is that's in the it. eye of the beholder. Luxury, wh yeah. when you know some people. I mean, you go to those trainer shops and and there's these things in these glass boxes that are worth twenty grand for a pair of trainers, and you're just like going. Now, is that perception of luxury or is that kind of... And this is the whole thing. And yeah. I think my understanding of luxury is it's up to you of what you perceive luxury. I love... There's a guy, a uh, retro watch guy on Instagram that I love, and he's got some vintage, wonderful watches that I know someone is going to put that on their wrist and they're going to go, this is luxury. And, you know, it's 20, 20 quid or uh, 200 pounds or whatever it is. So I think to myself, and he's going to get people going, oh, I like your watch. My business mm -hmm. is something totally different to this, is most of these products, apart from that product right there that's the Studio Underdog, most of my products, not this one, are one of one. They are personalised to someone, and it's for things like their wedding day, it's things... Anything they go through personalization. Mm. So for me, they that for me trumps all of this because it fits all of your things. You walk away with a one of one that is unique for you. It's not a mass market luxury product. But so that, I'd, I'd say that that is then taking a standard, typically standard product yeah. and making it luxury because it's it's customizing. So it's, it's similar to us us and and, and defenders. We're, we're we're taking that standalone unit and then yeah. kind of making it it luxury. So, um, I, I think beware. I, I think we've we've summarised that we we can't agree, <laughs> or oh, there isn't an agreement. We, we we have elements that we can agree, but the way we perceive them ultimately means like because I if this was just my setup, I would have it done differently. And I think every single person in the world would. And yeah. I think later today, I want to change it <laughs> because there's definitely like, we're going to there's going to be a lot of uh, but it also controversy you... around this part of it. The, yeah. the, but if you add more watches in there, you would you, you'd be screwed up even more. You think no, you, you think about the brands we talked about, AP yeah. and all those other ones. We haven't bring the big boys. We haven't brought, brought the independents. No, we no, we're, we're, we're just looking here. You know, we're looking at what we had in this draw. Mm -hmm. So th these are a mixture of everyone's watches that we've kind of been able to get, or, or you know. So these are the things where we go, okay, this is where we see some of these things. Yeah. You know, I, 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 we could do the same with the wall clocks. We could do the same with, you know, you think about all these different wall clocks. If we put the brands in a hierarchy on that, you, some of them would be right down at the bottom, some would be right at the top. But, and I think that's the great thing is that each of us has our own perception of luxury. Absolutely. You know, going back to a loo roll. <laughs> and talking about loo rolls, yeah. there, there's someone that I'd like to introduce as our BYOI. <laughs> what, 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 why, why bring it on a BYOI? It's a deeply unflattering segue. And she'll like it. So BYOI <laughs> is Bring It Own Independent. And based on one of the viewers' uh, comments that we should open the Br Bring Your Own Independence, not just to be watch brands, but to be independence within the watch world. And that can include content creators. And because of that, I want to introduce Britt Pierce as my nomination for this week. So Britt Pierce, I've, I've been following Britt for a long time when she operated as Watch Gringer on YouTube. And I, I feel like we've had a very similar journey of just wanting to talk about watches, but not having a clue how to do the technical side of it. And she's massively upgraded her editing style, her, her equipment. Her B-roll is some of the best B-roll in the, in the, the YouTube world. And she, she's the one who motivates me and makes me want to be better at what I do. Uh, so this is a little message from Britt to introduce herself. Hi, I'm Britt Chris. And this is... <laughs> she hasn't sent it. She may not send it. That may be the message. <laughs> just, do it, just mouth stuff and then... Yeah. And we'll Hi, I'm Britt. <laughs> Britt Pierce. And this is, this is my YouTube channel. I've kind of got a weird accent because I'm Canadian and Bristolian. <laughs> <laughs> and do check out Britt Pierce's channel on YouTube because she's got some awesome content and she is completely she independent. She makes Adrian want to be better. She it's, does. No, I'm she, still it, just like, I'm feeling it, it. It scares me how good she is. I feel like <laughs> I, I can't rest on... You really on, need to be whatever. better. I, I do need to be better <laughs> in so many aspects of life. Um, so guys, do you have anything else you want to add to uh, what we're talking about? 
I do have one quote. Look, it's been an argumentative, typical about a time episode, I guess. We we haven't quite landed the plane, but in, this is an unlandable plane, I think, yeah, in, I in agree. lots of respects, because it's it's subjective. But there's one quote that really stood out to me as what luxury has become. So while luxury in its first instance was around quality and around actual tangible things, what luxury has become, there's a great quote, luxury has become about selling the dream and everything that goes with it. And I think that that really sums up the, the ultimate evolution of a concept that in its earliest times was about the best of everything. So the King of England would have the best loo roll, <laughs> the best watches, the, literally, and it was unarguable that that was a luxurious life. Whereas now I think that that is an, another really interesting note to finish on, which is that if a brand sells a dream well, and sells a lifestyle that will come with that dream, which circles back to our first ever episode. That is this luxury world we live in. Cool. I like that. <laughs> You've got your quotes. I've got it's, my it's, quotes. It's, it's making my head hurt even more. <laughs> <laughs> no, that almost restarts it. But no, it does. It does. That, that's at least one you can't argue with. It, it is about selling a dream. It is. And, and, and that's the whole marketing thing around this. And again, kind of full circle, coming back to your original point at the start of you don't like the word luxury because it's become this big marketing thing. Yep. Guys, thanks so much for <laughs> joining us for this episode. 60% of you who have just watched this haven't hit that subscribe button. So please hit the subscribe button, not for our vanity, not for our egos, for, but for adding to our power to interact with watch brands, to let them lend us watches. Luckily, we have George Bamford and all of his lovely watches here. Mine. They are all yours, George. Stop lying. I'm cheating. <laughs> Mine. <laughs> this is mine. I like mine. Guys, like and subscribe. <laughs> Thanks very much for watching. Check us out on Instagram at about.effing.time and we'll see you next week. Take care. Bye. Bye.